Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Please allow me to warmly welcome you to today's seminar session, the third of the seminar series called Curriculum Studies in Canada. My name is Ying Ma, UBC Postdoctorate Fellow and Coordinator for this seminar series. I feel very honored to chair today's session. Each session will be approximately one hour, with speakers allowed around 40 minutes to give their presentations, followed by a short Q&A segment. With the permission of each speaker, we'll be recording each seminar, and they will become available on both of our website, quickumstudiesincanada.ca, and our YouTube channel. I hope to welcome today's speaker, Dr. Clement Gauthier. And now, Dr. William Pinar will give an introduction to Dr. Gauthier. Welcome. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Mala. Good morning, everyone. It is my professional privilege and personal pleasure to Université Laval. He has conducted research on 19th and 20th century elementary school curriculum reform in Quebec, a glimpse of which you can gain in research brief number 21 on the Curriculum Studies in Canada website. Thanks to my UBC colleague, Dr. Marie-France Berard for translating Claremont's essay for me. Thanks too to Dr. Berard for being willing to interpret during today's Q&A segment. Perhaps unknown to his colleagues at Laval, Professor Gauthier achieved fame in the United States during the 1980s when he, along with his then close colleague, Jacques Daniel, introduced French post-structuralism to us Americans at the Bergamo Conference in Ohio. His provocative piece, Between Crystal and Smoke, or How to Miss the Point in the Debate About Action Research, appeared in a 1992 collection of phenomenological and post-structuralist essays I edited with William Reynolds. But Clermont and I go back even farther. In 1984, we, I enjoyed three days with him and Jacques Daniel in Ramouski when they were both teaching at l'Université du Québec à Ramouski. Clermont kindly kept me as a house guest during my visit. His house sat on the banks of the St. Lawrence River. It was an enchanted location, a most memorable visit a memorable, I know, today's presentation will be. I present to you Professor Clermont Gauthier. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Dr. Ying. Uh, I will, uh, okay, I will take this, share the screen. Okay, I'll. Okay, here, uh, this could, excuse me. Okay, uh, is it, now you don't see me, I think, huh? We are voir encore, Monsieur Professor no, Gauthier, on voit encore. Okay, so I can, I can, oh, I will, I will, uh, I will start, okay. Uh, whoop. Okay. Uh, the, the title is uh, From Goose Feather Pen to Keyboard Does the School Form Still Have Its Relevance in the Contemporary uh, World? Uh, this text highlights a particular theme that has preoccupied me for a long time, namely the school form. This could be summarized, defined as a sensitive, sensitive and symbolic configuration of the relationship between the teacher and the student at school. Re relations that not only concern the curriculum, but also uh, go beyond. We will see about it later. It is not a question of presenting here the results of an empirical research in the usual sense of scholarly colloquia, but rather of conducting a reflection on the future of a school a reflection that I will articulate around the following question. Does the school form still 
have its relevance in the contemporary world. Why this question? Because the development of dig digital technologies today challenges the school more than ever before. As an illustration in a recent report to the Minister of National Education entitled Repenser la forme scolaire à l'heure du numérique, that is, rethinking school form in the digital age, Mrs. Bichetti Bizot, Inspector General of National Education in France, pointed out that uh, much more than the introduction of digital tools and how to use them in the classroom, the ambition from the outset has been to comprehensively rethink the school form, that is, the ways of teaching and learning, the organization and layout of learning spaces and times, teaching content, resources, the methods of monitoring and piloting evaluation, teacher training, and the relationship of the school to its environment and to the actors of education, in particular to parents. Digital technology would now, it seems, have this phenomenal power to change or even dismantle the school form. It is this project that we intend to analyze. In order to do this, we will first define the concept of school form according to three characteristics. First, the shaping of knowledge. Second, the transmission of knowledge. And third, the organization that supports the shaping and transmission. Next, we will see how in the 20th century, new pedagogy was formed as an attempt to overthrow the school form. Three utopias will then serve as, us as benchmarks to reveal directions of the new pedagogy. First, Toro's Walden or Life in the Woods, Illich, the schooling society, and finally, Michel Serre's Petit Pousset, his last, his last book. In the present case, uh, the idea of utopia is to demonstrate something to make it exist by words and therefore to help us to elaborate our argumentative. Thirdly, we will examine what the future of the school form could be uh, and, and this from two considerations. First, that which could be called the Adamist utopia and then that of the dematerialization of the school form through expert systems of which Skinner's Walden II was a kind of utopian foreshadowing. First, the concept of school form. The concept of school form was introduced almost 40 years ago by sociologist Guy Vincent in his book, L'Ecole Primaire Française. According to him, the school form appears throughout the Western world between the 16th and the 18th centuries. It, he expresses it very well in the following excerpt. Unlike this ancient mode by Ursae, seeing, doing, and doing with, the school form of transmission of knowledge and know-how put the emphasis on the written form leads to the separation of the schoolboy from the adult life, as well as the knowledge from doing. Furthermore, it, it requires submission to rules and to a specific discipline that replaces the old personal relationship thing with affectivity, uh, which therefore creates a new social relationship. This child can no longer, longer wander the streets he is subject to the order that characterized the classic city and he is locked in the walls of the school, a place apart from his own place. He must move in a row, has a strict schedule and must obey the rules displayed on the walls of the class, the first of which is the rule of silence. The teachers must limit himself to play the role of monitoring directing the reading and exercise done with books, applying without anger the penalties carefully provided for the regulation of for each offense. 
why the school form has appeared at that time. It is linked, according to the author, to the establishment of a new order. This generally corresponds to a, a hypothesis that we formulated several years ago, which states that pedagogy appeared due to the increase in number of students attending the class and that forced the teacher of the seventh century to radically change their way of teaching the class. This is a hypothesis that I would describe as quantitative to explain the genesis of the school form. Indeed, indeed at this time in urban areas, the number of, of students was becoming more and more significant. Four factors can explain this phenomenon. The Protestant Reformation, the Catholic Counter-Reformation, the new negative vision of childhood, it's the thesis of Philip Arias in the 60s, and the problem of delinquency in the cities. The combined effect of these factors led to an increase in student attending schools and to the establishments of schools. This will force the teacher to otherwise organize his class and its functioning. Due to large numbers of students, he will no longer be able to teach in the individualized mode, model on the preceptorship. Neither he will, will he be able to teach in an improvised way in the most complete disorder, as illustrated by Van Ostad's famous painting below. He will have to radically change his way of doing things uh, so that he can better control what is happening in his workplace, that, that is his class. The brothers of Christian schools are the example for excellence, as shown in this figure two. Uh, they formalize, the formalize the brothers of Christian schools, they, they formalize, that is, they gave form to what was until then improvised, more or, or less organized, unstructured, and yet not yet institutionalized. From the informal, from the lack of form, we went to the formalized, we introduced a boundary, a separation from the confusion. Ordering, in the sense of putting in order, is the active principle of this pedagogical transformation. In, this, in his masterful study, Discipline and Punish, Foucault spoke the same system that affected uh, prison, hospitals, armies, factories, and school, namely that transforming confused multitudes into ordered multiplicity. It was a project of the schools, I would say also. With regard to the school, three types of formalization of confused multitudes are deployed. Those concern knowledge, those concern its transmission, and those concern the organization of classroom environment so that transmission can take place. Let's uh, look uh, at them uh, one by one. Okay, this, this slide is not the uh, place in the, uh, I had uh, this morning, but I did not add that at the good place. It's the a slide for the uh, mutual mode of uh, uh, schooling or monetary system of schooling, but uh, I will talk to you about it later. Shape, uh, the, the first point is shaping knowledge. The concept of school form we will analyze uh, uh, a partir from the shaping of knowledge, shaping of the transmission, and the formatic, formatting of the class organization. The first one, shaping knowledge. As Vincent and his collaborators point out, the invention of the school form is accomplished in the production of school disciplines. It is the constitution of the field of knowledge, strictly speaking. For example, religion is not studied in the Bible but rather in the catechism, which now becomes the scholarly knowledge of religion. Similarly, civilities are considered the school knowledge of obedience of rules. For example, work in silence, take rants, raise the hand before asking a question, etc. 
The same applies to formatting syllabaries, table for reading, writing, arithmetic, etc. In addition, each field of knowledge is divided by degrees. For example, among the brothers of Christian school, there are nine orders or nine levels in reading, in six in writing, and six in arithmetic at the primary school. The second point, shaping of the transmission. To, to the shaping of knowledge to be taught correspond the codification of the method of teaching this knowledge. This is how knowledge and its transmission are recorded in writings. A pedagogy of drawing, music, or physical activity is not done without a writing of drawing, a writing of uh, musical, etc. These writings are, so to speak, the first treaties of pedagogies that abound in detail on how to teach the school knowledge. And uh, during the 17th century, we see, we can read very nice treaties of pedagogy. It's very, very interesting. More generally, there is also a shift from individual to simultaneous teaching. Having more students in urban, urban classrooms prevents the practice of the most con commonly used form of teaching until now, singular pedagogy, as we have seen in the figure one. Simultaneous teaching now allows the teacher to address all students at the same time and makes it possible for them to do the same exercise at the same time, see, as we see in figure two. The invention of the printing press made this pedagogical transformation possible. C, the formatting of the class organization. Large number of students required, in addition to shaping knowledge and its transmission, shaping the organization of the classroom. It referred to several dimensions, space, time, student behavior, and even the teacher. For example, it is recommended that the school be located in a rather quiet space, set back, cut off from the world, Windows placed in height out of the reach of the student eyes are also valued so that they are not tempted to constantly look at what is happening on the street. In addition, the space of the class is the subject of a very precise formalization. It is methodically gridded. Student places are thus meticulously determined. Place for the poor, place for the allocated, place allocated uh, according to the level of progress of the students, place related to succeeding or failing academically, the bench of infamy, for example. Similarly, educator of old felt the obligation to fill time, idleness being the mother of all vices. As the saying goes, there will be no downtime in the classroom. There, there is a real obsession with filling time from morning to night, from arrival to exit, students will be constantly busy. Additionally, the behavior of students is controlled in terms of body, movement, and conduct. Body, the body is now subject to a code of postures, posture for prayer, posture for sitting, posture for standing, posture for holding a goose feather pen, posture for writing, etc. Also, the movement of students must be done in an orderly manner. That is why the ranks were instituted. Finally, rewards and punishments were formalized. The old process of impulsive teacher who unceremoniously strike its pupil or embrace them has been replaced by that of a graduated scale of punishments and reward administered by a serious master who intervenes in full control of, in, of his emotions. Uh, for example, they use uh, the word, Latin word gravitas to express this idea of distance between the teacher and his uh, uh, pupil, a kind of a uh, posture of neutrality, I would say. Formally, uh, we would not forget that the master himself is also part of, a, of this system of subjugation characterized by the obedience to impersonal rules, an anonymous control system in which one no longer obeys uh, a specific person, but rather rules which are imposed on students 
as well as teachers in all schools or college in, college in the community. From Vincent point of, Vincent's point of view, it is precis precisely on this aspect that we find the principle of intelligibility of the school form. We will get back to it. This uh, school form continues over the centuries. It, it undergoes uh, 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 it, under, uh, it undergoes relatively significant transformations from the simultaneous mode in the 17th century, then the mutual mode, mode in the 19th century. It, it is a slide we, we, uh, we have seen uh, uh, before. Then to mass education, which explode in the 20th century under the effect of the school laws prescribing compulsory school but its profound nature will be little changed. One may think that this transformation of the confused multitudes into ordered multiplicity has been in short of formidable, formidable efficiency over time since it has succeeded in educating the masses, which is not negligible, it must be agreed. The second point, New pedagogy as an attempt to overthrow the school form. With the advent of new uh, pedagogy, the entire 20th century will become a vast attempt to over overthrow the school form or what might be called the pedagogical tradition. The dominant argument most often used in, is the following. The traditional school is separated from life, so it is necessary to unify the space and abolish this border that isolates the school from life. Let us examine this attempt to overthrow the school form through three scenarios that express this desire well. Walden or Life in the Woods from Toro, the schooling society of Elitch, and finally, Petit Pousset of Michel Set. The first case, Thoreau's Walden uh, or Life in the School, written in 1854, uh, is in a way the archetype of new pedagogy. I quote, if I wanted a boy to know something about the arts and science, for, for example, I would not follow the ordinary walk which is simply to send them to the neighborhood of some teacher where everything is professed and practiced, except the art of life. A flagship book of the American literature, Walden remains one of the reference books of libertarian thought of the 60s. The Beat Generation, Jack Kerouac, the hippie movement, May 68, have found a source of inspiration. In fact, this is a kind of revival of the Emil Rousseau's famous utopia. I quote, living is the job I wanted to teach him, and of quote, he wrote. This attempt to overturn traditional pedagogy pursued the project of establishing a different foundation for teaching that is in the very extension of the natural learning of life that with Gary calls primary learning a bit at random events such as that of speech or walking. As Joey pointed out, what can be done to break down the barriers which have unfortunately come to separate the school life from the rest of everyday life of the child? In this sense, this author tells us learning to read, write, draw when the need arise quite naturally has the student learned to speak when he had something to, to ask or say. The second case, decades later, with Illich and his famous book, The Schooling Society in the Heart of the Bubbling 70s, we, will, we still observe the same project of removing the separation between school and life. In it, he presents a radical critique of the school system. For Illich, compulsory school is an obstacle to education and instruction. We have, uh, where have we learned most of the things we know? He wonders, outside school, he answered. 
I quote, it is out of school or outside that everyone learns to live, learn to speak, to think, to love, to feel, to play, to swear, to manage, to work. End of quote. That is why the school must, according to him, reconnect with life. I quote, in the classroom, children are kept away from the everyday reality of Western culture. End of quote. For Illich, a society without school would need certain types of resources that would be made available and accessible to all. For example, all objects of knowledge for example, libraries, museums, factories, airports, farms, everyday objects, etc., should be made available to the public. There should also be a knowledge exchange service, that is, list of people offering their skills to others. An organization should also be set up to facilitate meeting and exchanges, networking and matching of equal peers to have the same knowledge needs. The third case, Petit Pousset by Michel Serre. In the interval between now the 2020s and the 70s, a new human was born, solemnly declares the philosopher Michel Serre. He, this new human, no longer has the same head or inhabits the same space, he says. Serre asks three fundamental questions. Firstly, what content to pass on, secondly, to whom to pass it on, and thirdly, how to transmit it. To these questions, he answers as follows. What to transmit? Knowledge, according to him, is already there. Everything is on the web. To whom to pass it on? Knowledge is already accessible to all. And finally, how to transmit it? Accessible to knowledge. Access to knowledge is open, distributed, I quote. Now distributed everywhere, knowledge spreads in a homogeneous, decentralized space, free of movement. The old classroom is dead, according to him. In the same sense, as we saw in our brief introduction, the idea of uniting school and life is therefore still very much present today, which this time the uh, with this time the internet and uh, information technologies. The school can no longer remain a sanctuary away from the world, said Becchetti Bizot, the uh, Inspector National in France. The future of the school form. Uh, we will examine in, in two parts the ad Damist Utopia and the Illusion Utopia accomplished by technology with Petit Pousset. First, the Adamist Utopia. In the first case, resulting from the extension of the idea of Rousseau, Toro, and Dewey, opening the school on life implies subordinating education to life. In fact, it amounts to trusting the chains of life according to encounters, but in the end, it, it is giving decisive weight to the privileged, to those who are well-born, to the happy few already filled by life and who can replace, without too many problems, the shortcomings of bad luck. At the same time, it also amounts, the letting, amounts to letting the multitude, those with the less naturally endowed life, fend for themselves not to say, leave them confused. The Elysian Utopia accomplished by technology with Petit Pousset. Furthermore, we, we saw it briefly with Petit Pousset, technology can actually, in many ways, replace the teacher in the sense proposed by the Utopia of Ilch. Indeed, knowledge is everywhere on inter internet, it's strange its transmission can be done by networking through collaboration between students and the organization of transmission can be realized remotely and in an open time, synchronous or asynchronous. However, this technological relay does not only open up a possibility, it frames, it gives a form, it formats the use of, the use of, to use a complex temporary term. This really formats knowledge, indeed 
search engine engines uh, are not neutral. They are programmed by algorithms. One has accept, access to databases with keyboard and sponsors pay uh, to be spotted first by search engines. In addition, this really formats the transmission. For example, the PowerPoint tools compels the content to be expressed in a certain way. It offers very great potential, but organizers the transmission also. Finally, this really formats the organization of the transmission in the sense that, for example, in distance training, uh, asynchronous or synchronous, it is necessary to obey the pre-established exchange system conditioned by the option of the menu. Uh, it is a fourth utopia, Skidden, Skinner's Walden II, that serves as a revelation for this problematic in the posture of Illich and Serre. In his book, Skinner's idea is precisely, precisely to eliminate the political reference, to establish the government of the experts, not to say the robot. By bringing together the three utopias, Walden II, the Schooling Societies, and Petit Pousset, we see that in the abolition of the boundary between school and life, it is now the expert system that will take over and organize human relations through technology. If we follow the logic of Vincent, creator, creator of the concept of school form, indicating that it is understood from the system of subjugation that put it puts in place, and particularly from the obedience to impersonal rules, then far from disappearing with the digital, we can think that the school form will unfold even more in the reign of the digital and in the, con in the continuation of the utopias of Illich, Petit Pousset, and Walden II, this obedience to impersonal rules also become a subjection to uh, rules of operation that are more and more ubiquitous but also more and more imperceptible. Perhaps in the end, we are witnessing the completion of the transition from a disciplinary society to a controlled society as Foucault and Deleuze so aptly pointed out. It is the controlled societies that are replacing now the disciplinary societies, said Deleuze. Even, even now, the control is going further with the emergence of algorithmic societies with the big data, with the big data, said, uh, I would say, the, in an interesting article, Packet. Conclusion. Whoops, sorry. Conclusion. Our thesis is threefold. Firstly, uh, in the wake of the first Rousseauist utopia to unite school and life, is to make the school disappear for the benefit of life. And in that case, it will be the privileged class who's left itself more endowed and then the school who will undoubtedly have the means to overcome the inadequacies of life and will benefit fully from this adamism. Secondly, in the wake of uh, the utopias of Illich, Petit Pousset and Walden too, the school form does not necessarily disappear with technologies. On the contrary, it flourishes more, uh, more. Indeed, the change of the school form exists in its disappearance only in appearance from the sensitive field, all becoming ubiquitous but imperceptive as a mechanism through the new modes of control made possible by technology. Thirdly, but something or especially someone may have really disappeared in these two utopian processes, and this is the teacher. Indeed, the, the project to unite school and life either leads directly to the end of the school form, in which, in which case the master is replaced by life that is transmuted by teacher, or paradoxically, 
to a school form driven by the digital in a robotic spiral well, where the master is no longer considered really necessary. In, in this second case, by situating the principle of generation, that is intelligibility of the school form in its relation to impersonal rules, Vincent gave an exaggerated importance, in our opinion, to this impersonal dimension, as if the teacher was a puppet at the very beginning of the constitution of the school form in, during the 17th century. But now, the teacher is absolutely present. He is indeed there from the beginning, and, uh, and he has always been, as is clearly seen, for example, in the writing of the conduct of Christian school uh, in the 17th, 17th century. We even see in these old texts, enunciate his suffering, in the suffering of the teacher, in the face of difficulties in exercising his profession. It is even better seen in Brother Agaton, uh, Agaton's book, and uh, the title is Les Douze Vertus d'un Bon Maître, in English is The Twelve Virtues of a Good Teacher, written in 1834. In this book, uh, who, uh, Agaton, uh, beyond the impersonal uh, method imposed uh, to his community, Agaton uh, seeks the way to intervene with finesse with the student. The teacher, uh, for, for Agaton, uh, the teacher is for the teacher, there is uh, neither too much or too little in his prescription everywhere in his book. For example, the teacher tried to find the right moment, the necessary intensity, the appropriate gesture, the right speech, the reasonable action, the first sufficient proximity or distance, the appropriate firmness or flexibility. These elements do not refer to statistical average or coded gestures these terms rather express the singular, central, fundamental, essential place of the teacher's pedagogical tact occupies. In fact, the teachers encountering difficulties in exercising his professions due to the number of students is led to look for a way to take control before the disorder settles in his classroom. It is rather, in my opinion, this need for teachers to insert an organized functioning to answer order, which is the driving principle of the school form and not uh, the relation to impersonal rules, as Vincent suggests. The relationship to impersonal rules seems to us only one element among a set of strategies uh, deployed to turn these confused multitudes of students into ordered multiplicities. It is undoubtedly this presence of the teachers that made the American school would not have, according to Larry Cuban, really changed between 1880 and 1990. Uh, indeed, he points out for more than a century in the USA, the many pedagogical innovations have not changed the fundamental portrait of the school. True, uh, new was added to the old, but fundamentally, transforming the school form, uh, the school has some, somehow, uh, uh, somehow digested innovations through a mechanism that Cuban calls dynamic conservatism. The teacher is undoubtedly associated with with it for something because it is in his class, he takes some and then leaves some. Certainly he can integrate what suits him in his operation, but he does not hesitate to not use what risk becoming a pellet in the execution of his work. For the teacher, the order is fundamental to be able to practice his profession with important number of students. This is why it was necessary to establish and maintain a separation, a fence, a boundary, a delimitation of space between school and life to ensure its transformation of confused multitudes into ordered multiplicities. Why this order is so 
why is this order so fundamental and why does it imply that the space between school and life must be kept separated? If school was life, it would not uh, need to exist. That is what the first utopia reveals. But schools doesn't have to be life. It is simply the conscious and articulated recovery of life. The knowledge presented at school simply allows to understand life. It doesn't have to be life. For its part, digital age does not lead to the disappearance of, of the school form. On the contrary, it can lead to its most absolute fulfillment and to a stern degree. Indeed, the ways in which mutual uh, teaching works, uh, for example, the, the, on the slide we, see, we saw before, one teacher can teach to uh, 1,000 students. For example, this, uh, the mutual uh, teaching form uh, is only a pale foretaste of the modes of control exercised by the digital spectrum, impersonal, imperceptible, and omnipresent control. Knowledge may be there everywhere, it's networking simplified. It nevertheless requires someone to select it, interpret it uh, to someone else, make it relevant, criticize it, organize the conduct of actors to function in the real space, in the real space or at a distance of the class for instruction and education to happen in a collective of students. This task is first and foremost the fundamental work of the teacher in relation to his students. Hair of the culture, critic, and cultural interpreter, this is precisely where his fundamental role lies. Failing to maintain the essential place of the teacher, therefore, uh, of the school form that is essential to him, either the multitudes will remain confused or they will be stupid. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Gauthier, uh, for your wonderful speech and very um, thought provoking and provide us a lot of insights. And right now, I hope to welcome any comments or questions for Dr. Gauthier. Well, uh, I can uh, I can make a, a, a point uh, and maybe a question, Clermont. Um, I'm I'm thinking about the um, the technologization uh, of the school form as it's uh, I think you used the word fulfillment, uh, which creates a kind of uh, ubiquity of control. I'm reminded of the uh, partnership between uh, the Pearson publisher and uh, IBM's uh, and its computer Watson to create small chips to put under the skin of school children that will uh, communicate the real time data about their cognitive and emotional struggles solving whatever problems have been assigned to them. It also not only does that, does that ex um, partnership testify uh, to the ubiquity of uh, control uh, through technologization. But it seems to me to also perfectly eclipse the central role of the teacher, as you've described it, as the mediating presence between life and efforts to understand life. Um, do you think that um, educators' uncritical embrace of technological advancement uh, undermines, even threatens, their own, the, their own centrality in the educational process? Uh, my, yeah, my France, can you help me a little? <laughs> Please. Uh, oui, certainement, c'était une, une très longue question. Uh, uh, Dr. Parna, would you kindly, uh, um, that, that particular experiment, when did that happen? It was between Pearson and? 
IBM and international IBM. business machines. It's still, it's still ongoing. The the point of the, the point of reporting yeah. it is that it in the in the creation of this microchip, they're still working on it. Oh yeah. You see okay. it it it, it uh, yeah it communicates data straightforwardly. The teacher is unnecessary. I'm going, je, je vais essayer de, je vais, tra, je vais traduire, bonjour, euh, professeur Gauthier. Bonjour. Donc, euh, docteur Piner euh, a lu sur une recherche entre la maison d'édition Pearson aux États-Unis oui. et euh, IBM, les ordinateurs, pour créer un microchip qui serait inséré dans la, sous la peau des enfants. <rire> de manière à ce que Pearson et les compagnies d'ordinateurs IBM puissent déterminer les processus cognitifs de l'enfant en apprenant. Semblerait-il que cette recherche-là est encore en cours? Mm -hmm. Et euh, Dr. Pryner, bon, soulève bien sûr le, un peu l'inquiétude face à ce type de recherche, mm -hmm. mais aussi euh, beaucoup de professeurs aujourd'hui, beaucoup d'enseignants embrassent, aiment, apprécient la technologie, c'est emballant. Mais là, à ce moment-là, est-ce qu'on aussi, par, euh, il y aura un, un effet de rebondissement et qui peut se retourner contre un jeu qui se peut se retourner contre l'enseignant et qui va faire en sorte que ça érode leur rôle, leur position yeah. aussi au niveau de l'enseignant? Oui, oui. Oui, je pense que c'est un point très intéressant. Nous pouvons voir maintenant que nous sommes au centre de ce phénomène de pandemic and uh, uh, all the schools are they use uh, uh, internet uh, distance uh, teaching uh, etc and uh, many many students uh, uh, don't like that uh, they, they 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 need the, the their teacher they they they, they find uh, the the importance of being uh, being in contact with the teacher uh, and uh, i think Even if the technology is useful, it, it's uh, we, we don't. Uh, uh, I, I do not argue against technology, uh, I, but I don't want to deify. Deify is a word. Uh, uh, I don't want to make the technology the ultimate solutions or for uh, uh, the, the, the pedagogical problems. Uh, uh, I think that uh, we we never have to forget the importance of the teacher. The, Uh, teaching is a relation uh, work uh, is to work with people. The, the, the teacher work with with uh, uh, he works with uh, children. So the, it's a relational uh, fundamentally it's a relational type of work I would say. But also it, it, uh, I, I, as I said, the teacher is uh, and here he. he, he Uh, he, he knows the tradition, he knows the, 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 the knowledge constituted and he wants to transmit it, but he, he cannot transmit it as it is in, on the internet, I would say. He has to select it, interpret it with, for his particular group of, of children, uh, so he, he, he has to play a role of interpreter, a, a kind of hermeneutic uh, with his children with the, the, the children in the, in the classroom. And also, he, he, uh, he has to be a critic of the knowledge on the internet too. So we cannot let everything on the, the, the power, I would say, of the, the technology or those that format technology. Uh, I would say it's, uh, it's, it, it's dangerous. Uh, socially, it's dangerous for our culture. It's even dangerous for Uh, our security, I would say, social security, as we see that uh, many people can rob the, 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 our personal information, etc. So it's good technology, but the, at the same time, we have to, to uh, be cautious about, about uh, what they offer. And uh, if uh, Pearson has this project with I, uh, IBM, uh, I, I would be... Uh, I would worry about that, I would say. It, it, it's, it, it is not necessary to go as far. You know, a t teaching is a nice uh, work uh, and uh, it's a, a very honorable work, if this word exists. Uh, it's uh, uh, to work with uh, young people, to uh, initiate them to the culture, to help them to orient in the, in the life, to, uh, to, to 
I would say to make their way the, uh, in the internet to select the, the good uh, text, the, the less good text, uh, the articles, etc. So the teacher has a, a fundamental, essential role. And it's not a robot or a, uh, or a machine that it will be programmed uh, that uh, will do that. They will do that. They can do that, but they cannot do that in a critical way, the way we want to have it done. The, it will be done like the, uh, uh, with the interest of, uh, uh, I would say, commercial interest or uh, etc. for the big companies that will uh, invest money uh, with these, uh, the, the, these uh, algorithms or etc. Do I um, answer well, correctly? <laughs> Merci, Clément. Merci, Marie-France. Welcome. So, Professor, I, I really enjoy your presentation, and thank you so much. Uh, your research reminds me of a study that I previously did. It was about the implementation of a general education program in Peking University in China. The general education program was initiated in 2004 modeling the core curriculum of Harvard University in the United States. My research investigates how the program was copied and modified during the process. One of the conclusions I made in my research was that a university is not uh, made of, is not made of walls, buildings, or facilities. It is made of communications, infinite, endless communication, between teacher and teacher, teacher and student, student and student, which are uh, ever shifting, decentered, even nomaded, uh, filled with various possibilities and the reciprocities, eventually allowing one to flourish in different ways. So this is what a university is for, like communication, or like what you just mentioned, a place to live, to love, and to manage the school and life, the boundaries has dissolved. So uh, my question is like, uh, so professor, would you like to uh, uh, comment this conclusion like universities for communication? Also, of course, I wanna still further, further develop my research. So would you like to give me some guidance or share any of your thoughts? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm not sure I've uh, understood all what you said, but uh, f uh, sure, uh, uh, I would say, uh, as I said, even it's the same thing for the primary school, secondary school, or university, I would say. Uh, teaching is a relational task, I would say. A teacher is relating to its students, and it's fundamental. If there is no relationship between a teacher and uh, his students, uh, I would say it, it doesn't have a great value. It's why it's, uh, what, what it's, it's so difficult to be in a relationship or, or uh, it's very different, different uh, at distance, uh, distance education and presential education. We, we are, we, we, the communication is less interesting, I would say, at this time. But it's more than nothing, but it, it's, uh, it's, it's less than in presential. But the first, I would say, the basic element is, uh, is the, 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 the relationship between the, the teacher and the student. But also we have to, uh, the, the teacher is uh, asked to transmit <coughs> uh, content. <coughs> And he, he is an interpreter of the content. So he, he, will, he will interpret the content to transmit, but in a way that will fit to the students he, he is in front of. And it's why the relationship is, it's, is, is, is so important because the content he will transmit will be adapted to the group he, he has. So he will, he will select element important for them and he will, uh, I would say create activities or exercises that will uh, fit uh, to them. And finally, the, 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 the third role is important role is that the teacher, especially at university, is a critic. Uh, that's, that is to say that he will uh, help students to 
understand or to see the limits of the knowledge to to uh, 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 to to uh, uh, see the, the better ways I would say of uh, uh, constructing knowledge etc so uh, the, the, the these three roles uh, are uh, the role of hair critique and interpret I would say for me is the the task of the, uh, the, the, the professor, the teacher, at, at primary school or at university, for me, it's the same. And basically, uh, before doing that, he has to be in relationship with its student. Uh, we, we, uh, it's, uh, in French, we would say, c'est un métier relationnel. It's a relationship uh, work, I would say. And uh, uh, it's fundamental. It's, it's a kind of... A, uh, I would say it, it's quite different, uh, uh, a, a chemist, and to teach chemistry is not the same thing, I would say. The teacher of chemistry, he has to know, he has to know chemistry, but also he has to work with a public. A public is the, the, the students he has at, uh, at, in his classroom, so he has to adapt, he has to interpret the knowledge, the chemistry for them. Uh, so it, it is not, uh, he is doing, I would say, uh, a kind of work different from the chemist. He, his work is to teach chemistry to a public, particular public. Uh, and uh, it is what is so interesting in this uh, kind of work, but so difficult at the same time, because it's not always easy to, to teach. Uh, uh, students will uh, will not understand, will uh, have uh, behavior problems uh, at the secondary school or primary school, etc. So yet he will have to uh, manage all that. But uh, uh, it's, it's why it's so important, basically, to have a relationship with its students. Okay? Thank you. Clear. Peut-être que c'est ça la, la belle définition de la forme de l'école, finalement. Ce n'est pas les murs, ce n'est pas les bureaux, ce n'est pas même une organisation dans les écoles, mais c'est le relationnel. Oui, ben, je, je pense qu'on ne on, qu peut pas... I will, I will answer in, in English, OK? I, I think that we cannot teach with, uh, in a disordered manner. Uh, as we saw in the figure one, in the figure one, the old master was, I would say, an improvised master. He was uh, teaching one children at a time. He was teaching to one and the others were doing what they wanted. So it was confused, disorganized completely. Uh, and I'm not sure that uh, uh, education will uh, come out from this kind of process. At this, uh, on the other part, uh, when we have more than two, three, five, ten students, when we have uh, 20, uh, 40, 50, 100, etc., we have to create a form. We have to create order, not in a negative sense of order, but to, we have to organize the life in a particular space that is the classroom. So we, the, the children, uh, the students cannot be everywhere in the classroom. It cannot be uh, uh, a lot of, of uh, uh, noise and uh, they cannot go in, go out, uh, etc. If we want, it's the same for us. If we want to understand something, we have to concentrate to, 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 uh, to concentrate on something. Uh, it has to be quiet uh, relatively uh, uh, to, to understand to, to, uh, for, uh, it's an ambience important for, for learning. So uh, uh, order does not uh, signify, uh, does not mean, uh, I would say, the absence of relationship. I think that relationship is always present in the the work of, of the teacher and uh, it, it can be uh, quite uh, uh, useful to if you you have the the, the, the time to read the Agaton brothers Agaton and his book the 12 virtues of a good master it, it's quite interesting to see the old master that finally he, he has a code of teaching 
But at the same time, you see the criteria. It's not easy. You have to use tact. You have to feel what is going on. What, what is going on? And it's, it's quite sensitive, this part. And then for me, it's uh, the, the tact of teaching, I would say, in a different sense of those, uh, Max van Manen. It's not the same, necessarily the same way. But, but uh, uh, the tact of teaching it, it is important in a structure organized. And it's why uh, the, I think that we have to be organized. And I enjoyed a lot uh, Foucault, uh, Surveiller et Punir, uh, uh, or uh, I don't remember the, the, the English name of the book, but in French it's, it's Surveiller et Punir, when he, he said that the, the disciplinary uh, mode is to transform uh, confused multitude in uh, uh, organized multiplicities in a way we have no choice. We have to do that. Uh, we have to do that. But we have. We don't have to do that in a, uh, um, I would say, excessive way or impossible way or, uh, 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 I would say, uh, in a, as the control society seems to to orient now. I would say, uh, and it's, it's, it seems to me uh, excessive, excessive. Yeah. But we need order. We need order. We, we cannot be a 1,000 without order. We, we have to organize things. Uh, uh, but there is a limit. Uh, and where is the limit? The limit is uh, not easy to find. I would say it's in a classroom, is, it's tact. Uh, this in very, very, uh, it's finesse. In, in, in French, we have this nice word, and English too. It's uh, finesse. Do you say that finesse? And uh, it's the, this way of looking what is going on with your group, uh, how uh, one student doesn't uh, listen to you. Uh, uh, okay, it's time to do that. They are, uh, they are tired now. Okay, we will do another activity. It, uh, there is no code for that. Uh, it's not because it's uh, the hour, the time, the minute. Okay, no, it, you have to feel that. And to feel you have to be present. You have to be in relationship with your, with your students. And, and, uh, but you need order to also. So, so you need, uh, it's the difficult pathway, uh, I would say, between order and at, at the same time, the tact, the mm -hmm. sensibility, the sensitivity, the, and uh, that's it, I would say. It's, uh, the, uh, uh, I would say uh, uh, it's Freud. Freud many years ago said that uh, there was three uh, uh, métiers, how do you say métier, three works impossible uh, to be uh, to govern the state, to uh, treat uh, uh, the, the patient, and to teach, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's an, an impossible task because we know that it we we will not succeed eventually. Uh, the, the 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 children we have in the students we have in our class, they, they it will not be perfect. We know that, uh, uh, but at the same time, we do. We we want to have them progress and we will make uh, the, the all we can to have them uh, progress, I would say. And we will use our tact, knowledge, tact and uh, order. And <laughs> it's a mixture of these things to, uh, I would say, accomplish this impossible task. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Clement uh, Gauthier. Um, due to the time constraints, I think we will finish up here. And I hope to thank you again for your wonderful speech and intriguing um, Q&A se segment. And uh, I hope to thank Dr. William Piner and Dr. Anne Phelan for hosting this event. And I hope to thank every one of you to come here and join the discussions and listening to Dr. Gauthier. And our next, uh, thank you very much. And our next uh, seminar session is scheduled on November the 6th, 2020, so which is next month, uh, another Friday. And I'm looking forward to seeing every one of you there. Have a very good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Merci. Salutations, Professor Gauthier. Enchanté d'avoir rencontré. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bye. Dr. Piner. Thank you. Hello, Anne. Thank you. Beautiful session. Thank you so much.